Uh, welcome to the third, well, maybe third and a half, depending on whether you count the uh, the session where I, I sort of wasn't able to get the internet connected. Um, oh, that looks like I'm, I'm apologies, it looks like I've got uh, the screen, just by trying to get the, some technical difficulties here. Hmm. Um, just trying to refresh, trying to see uh, whether this is streaming as it's supposed to be. There it is. All right. Finally. Um, thought I might add another connection problem there. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if the, 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 the connection allowed me to capture the initial uh, 15 seconds. So I'll just say it again. Welcome to the third session of the day. Third and a half if you count the one where the connection caused it to fail. Um, boy, uh, things escalated quickly with this, uh, both in Northern and Southern California for different reasons. Right now, the really concerning thing are now very widespread powder, power outages uh, on the order of by my count, essentially over 2 million people. So getting close to a million power customers, which usually is or 2 to 2.5 people per customer, since multiple people live in one household, uh, that likely means that there are uh, upwards of 2 million people right now in Central and Northern California without power. I do not know why so many of the news outlets get this wrong. They're quoting like local utilities saying up to 100,000. It looks like it's at least 10, 10 to 20 times that. So I don't really understand why there's such a discrepancy there, but I'm just using publicly available information. Looks like there are large outages, and this has not happened in a long time where uh, the, the, the town centers and whole towns are completely off the grid right now, which suggests that in addition to a lot of extensive damage to individual power poles and lines in neighborhoods, there might actually be some transmission damage from some of the larger towers somewhere. I've actually heard a couple of unverified reports of um, high tension transmission line damage, which could result in prolonged outages. In any case, the winds have really picked up in Northern California. In fact, it materialized in every bit uh, as strong as expected with gusts over 90 miles an hour uh, now being recorded in the hills and near the coast or earlier with frequent gusts 55 to 75 miles an hour at lower elevations, all the way from uh, the San Luis Obispo and western Santa Barbara County coast, north to southern Mendocino, into the Central Valley, Sacramento County, northward into the Central Sacramento Valley, and even the northern Sacramento Valley, and the foothills and Motherload. A lot of damage. Uh, and I actually want to show that because I know a lot of folks, in fact, there probably are a lot fewer folks on right now uh, than would normally be here uh, because... Uh, quite frankly, a significant fraction of you probably don't have electricity or won't shortly given the way things are headed. So I, I do want to share a screen showing uh, the power conditions right now uh, as a favor to folks who can't see it. Um, and well, I guess you're, what you're seeing first is radar. I'm actually going to change that. I'll come back to radar in a minute. Um, let me just see here. Um, yeah, so this is what I want to show. Uh, and this is the wrong tab, I'll show that as well in a moment. Uh, but this, this, this is the current California uh, outage map. Man, uh, okay, uh, there is a California ISO grid status transmission alert. I am not totally sure what that is, but that's a pretty big deal. That's for statewide electricity. So, hmm, let me do some quick searching. Um, the ISO is the independent system operator uh, and I'm trying to see if they have an update. No, of course not. They just have regularly scheduled tweets. Um, mm, yeah, all I can see is that there is a statewide transmission event. This seems to confirm informally that there is um, some large-scale problems with the power infrastructure, not just local outages due to trees falling on wires. So trying to find a little bit more information on this. Um, yeah, there is nothing on Twitter. It is absolute radio silence. That is kind of remarkable. 
Um, well, if somebody hears about it, uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to be monitoring the chat live to see if anybody has information. Um, apparently, it is a transmission emergency, which was declared. Um, I'm going to do some quick Googling here. Um, this is literally popping up in the last few minutes. Um, I'm going to their Act the Cal ISO website. Okay, I am seeing it now. Transmission emergency. What is it? Transmission emergency declared for Northern California, effective for at least the next several hours. Uh, reason. Uh, template here. Okay, they did not fill out the form. So, uh, I guess uh, this is this is a full scale transmission emergency. Uh, that that is very rare under non uh, public safety power uh, shutoff conditions, which is not what's going on here. Obviously, there's no wildfire risk. That's one thing that nobody does have to worry about at the moment. So we will probably hear more about that soon. Um, Let's see here. Um, yes, yeah, so what I'm trying to find is whether Yeah, there's there's no uh, there's no information. So I'll I'll let you know as it comes through. Regardless of, of exactly what's going on there, there there are millions of people at this point without power just due to the, the, the localized trees on lines, lines down, power poles down. I'm going to do a bit of a tour. This is, uh, by the way, poweroutage.us, a really helpful website. It's not an official source, but it's a data aggregator from all the different um, power companies uh, in different... This is a national f uh, feature, so it's actually quite helpful. Uh, you can kind of see the relative number, the outage scales based on the number, the fraction of customers in a given county that are out. Uh, the oranges and the reds are a pretty high number. Santa Clara County, it looks like right now a little over half of all customers are out of power. So that's a major outage, but we're getting up towards 30 or 40 percent in San Joaquin County, Sacramento County, Placer County, Sonoma County, San Mateo County, and there are major outages elsewhere. Uh, Marin. Uh, 32,000, 33,000 people out of 178,000 customers. Uh, those are large-scale outages. Uh, I know my parents are, are, are out of power. Um, so there's a lot of these. And again, so the total customers out is 905,000. And keep in mind, again, multiply by two or two and a half to get the total number of people because multiple people live per household. Uh, looking at the PG&E site, which is difficult to access, again, if you don't have power, uh, I'll zoom in on Marin County and show that, for example, uh, large swaths of San Rafael, Fairfax, San Anselmo, all out of power. Much of, in fact, it looks like almost all of West Marin is out of power. Point Reyes Station, Inverness, Lima, uh, down uh, Polinas, uh, Muir Beach, so a pretty good chunk. Uh, Corte Madera, Larkspur, Mill Valley. Uh, m much of Sonoma County, west of the 101 corridor, so west of Sebastopol, Rohnert Park. Parts of Windsor, Santa Rosa, lots of people out. And then again, up in the hills, you go up into uh, Mendocino County, and pretty much all the population centers are out of power. Uh, so I suspect we don't have a lot of folks joining us from there right now to see this. Much of Yolo County is out of power. Uh, parts of Davis, Dixon, especially Vacaville, looks like a good chunk of the city is out. Uh, Sacramento, actually the city of is doing a little better. There are limited outages in the city itself, but there's quite a few. Uh, although maybe there's a data void actually, that makes me suspicious. I'm guessing that SMUD doesn't participate in this data sharing. That there's, it, This looks like too clean of a map because in every surrounding direction in the suburbs, there are major outages. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, that's just a data void. So I'm guessing there are major outages in Sacramento, up in Chico, there's some outages. That's about the northern extent of the major winds. Looking into the East Bay, the, the 580 corridor, again, Pleasant Hill, Walnut Creek, outages, outage city. There's even some in more urbanized, highly urbanized parts where there a lot of the lines are underground, so I'm a little surprised. Uh, in the East Bay, um, Allendale, the suburbs of, 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 to the east of Oakland, Redwood Heights, Laurel, large outage there, scattered outages in the East Bay. The East Bay actually seems to be doing better than most places. 
some parts of San Francisco outages. Um, downtown is all right, and and the the ocean and her sunset uh, look like they're all right. The, so the northern part of the city is all right. There's some outages in Hayes Valley, and then much bigger ones in South San Francisco. So south of Twin Peaks looks like a good portion of the city is out. In fact, as you go south, a, a lot of the electricity is out on the peninsula right now. Looks like all of Pacifica, Daly City uh, for the most part going down. Uh, Highway 1, uh, Montera, Moss Beach, everyone, Half Moon Bay for the most part, except maybe not in the town center, but everyone outside of the town center is out. Uh, yeah, just outage after outage after outage. Most of the Santa Cruz Mountains power is out. Boulder Creek, Ben Lomond, parts of Scotts Valley, Aptos. Um, and then the this and then it looks like all of Los Gatos, so major outage in the, in the South Bay as well. Everything except for essentially the, the Santa Clara and downtown San Jose. Outages in Menlo Park, near Stanford, although not Stanford itself, um, and that's the Bay Area. Going down the coast, again, major outages, Aptos, uh, Monterey, it looks like almost the entire city of Monterey is out of power. Um, east, some eastern areas have it, but it's mostly, mostly out. Um, and then we go down the central coast, there's some outages in the Central Valley too, uh, in, in and around Bakersfield, uh, Napomo. Uh, outages. Um, we go south, um, and it looks like uh, the Southern California. Well, there are fewer outages in the south because this is sort of it highlights where the winds were. Uh, so, just to give you a sense of all of this, uh, and then um, yeah, there's still a large number of outages. I'm gonna check and see if there's any. Uh, I'm just gonna check and see if there's any updates on that Cal ISO transmission emergency. Nope. Um, Cal ISO News. I'm just Googling this as I go along. And of course, there's nothing. There's nothing on Twitter. There's nothing on the Cal ISO site except for the initial transmission emergency. So. It may just, it may also be due to the uh, the contiguity of the grid itself. There, if there if there's a sufficient number of breaks even in local lines, I think it can be difficult to um, maintain the whole grid. I'm no I'm no power expert, uh, electrical grid expert, but I do have some familiarity with with some work we had done on public safety power shutoffs and wildfires. Um, let's see. All right. So I don't want to spend too much time on that because there are other things to talk about. So obviously in Northern California, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to skip, I'm going to share radar instead right now. So I'm going to go to the Bay area first. Um, you should see the live radar screen again. Uh, I'm going to bring that up. Um, let's see here. Uh, some folks saying informally saying uh, um, yeah that not not totally clear um, all right so getting some some informal estimates at uh, two hundred thousand smuds that's the sacram uh, sorry that's the Sacramento Metro um, utility uh, two hundred thousand customers out um, that's probably a good fraction of all the all the folks in Sacramento. So actually, so the numbers here are are conservative because it does not include a number of heavily affected regions. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to quickly see. Uh, okay, here's the radar. As I mentioned earlier, this really fills in over the Bay Area on the backside, and unfortunately, we're getting these these power these pretty strong uh, convective bands uh, spiraling along uh, the backside of the low. The low is now sort of uh, up here somewhere. Whoops, my mouse is going crazy, and you have flow that's like this. It's just going to continue to sweep these spiral bands in. We keep seeing these little convective elements like this. These can cause flooding and locally much stronger winds. But right now. The concern is uh, there could be renewed flooding over the North Bay in this in this zone from about San Francisco up through the western Sacramento Valley, so the, the Woodland, Winters, Davis area. Some places were seeing flooding earlier, and this actually may be the heaviest and most persistent rain of the whole storm now, along with some of the strongest winds. So 
Uh, this will probably be the last gasp, but it's a strong one, and it may be the strongest gasp of the storm in totals. All right, so this is, in, this is interesting and somewhat concerning. Look at that squall line. This may actually be a narrow cold frontal rain band that's developed with a torrential rainfall extending from about Dixon uh, northward along, this is along like the Highway 505, Highway 5 corridor up towards Maxwell and Willows. So likely significant flooding now occurring in this area given how much rain fell er earlier and given that this is now the most torrential rain of the day. So significant local uh, farmland, roadway flooding, and maybe even some more significant small stream and, and small river flooding in this area. This is actually, um, that's that's going to cause some problems. Uh, and also, let's take a look at the winds. Uh, okay, so you can actually really see the strong winds here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit before I draw so to, to, to focus on this a little more. Look at those winds. You can see this uh, narrow cold frontal rain band feature uh, really well defined over uh, the western part of the Central Valley moving eastward right now. Look at that. That is a notable feature. Let me see if there are uh, some, some estimates of what's, what we're seeing in some of the winds uh, here. So we're seeing, um, yeah, I mean, this is pretty consistent with the winds that we're seeing. So it's difficult to tell sometimes what the height of the atmosphere is, but we're seeing, you know, wind speeds into the 60s of miles an hour, which is actually pretty consistent with the gusts we're seeing at, on the ground and why we're seeing so many power outages. So pretty much those winds, as I mentioned earlier, now that the precipitation has gotten intense, are mixing all the way down to the surface. So um, pretty intense things going on. This is going to move through Davis and Woodland, and it looks like uh, probably the, the 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 it's it's. Let's see. It's um, not totally sure if it's going to move through Sacramento. It may just miss Sacramento to the north. But regardless, um, this is a very significant sort of narrow narrow code frontal rain band feature. Biggest threats will probably be. Uh, some torrential rainfall, uh, enhanced flooding locally, and then bringing those 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts all the way down to the surface. Maybe some lightning too. Again, this is also affecting North Bay right now to a slightly less intense extent, although I think Marin County and the East Bay uh, over into uh, Oak, uh, Richmond and Vallejo are pretty good, getting hit pretty hard. This may be the main last gas. Although I say that, but then there are all of these convective uh, cells sort of training over the Santa Cruz Mountains. So this could cause rain and wind problems again. A severe thunderstorm or two still cannot be ruled out. Uh, so I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to continue with the radar further south in a moment. But first, I want to take a look at the comments just to see what the, what the deal is here. If anybody has um, specific comments. And by the way, that feature I mentioned that's moving into the western Sacramento Valley right now, that is the cold front. So folks are saying, why is this all happening behind the cold front? Uh, mo much of it isn't. That actually is the front. Uh, so uh, it just, people were assuming that because the sun came out that the front hadn't passed yet. Um, all right here. Ah, we have Dale Cox on the stream, a real disaster aficionado, uh, who mentions that uh, power is blinking in the Sierra foothills. Not too surprising, but it just goes to show you just how widespread these issues are. There are, you know, local to large-scale power grid issues all the way from uh, Santa Barbara and Ventura counties in the south, all the way north into the northern Sierra foothills. So that that is a that is an unusually wide swath. Uh, the, the latest numbers that came in, the low did make it down to one of its lowest plausible uh, pressures in the models. It's about a 978 millibar low, so it did officially bomb out. This is a bomb cyclone after all that. Uh, and so you can, uh, at, at least you can attach a, a, a cool term to it, I guess. But also, uh, this is the strongest San Francisco to Los Angeles pressure gradient ever measured in uh, February, and it is one of the strongest values on record, period. So this is, in that sense, a historic storm. And the bigger story is that the somewhat alarming part is I actually think that the major wind and power outages will be the less dangerous part of the storm relative to what's about to unfold and is starting to unfold in Southern California. So let me just catch my breath. This is just what's going on in the north. Um, if you're worried about the north, I'm actually more worried about the south and what is yet to come. 
All right, um, let me just see. I'm just trying to look through comments. Uh, yeah, lots of people saying that the power is out in Sacramento, so clearly SMUD has major problems too. They just don't report it to the public dashboard. Uh, oh, I don't like it when the comments skip ahead. It makes me lose my spot. Um, all right, so let's see what else there is. Um, let's see here. Report from Tom S. in Barsdale, uh, California, which is in Ventura County. as a 5.15 p.m. Um, Sustained rains in three of the five routes out of town are already closed, so things are getting worse. Um, getting over some reports of the Highway 1 at the tunnel uh, is blocked. I was worried that there would be big problems on Highway 1. Big Sur Coast, so, but there are other sections of 1 that are also quite vulnerable to events like this. Sounds like it is down for the count. Uh, largely as expected, unfortunately. Um, let's see. All right, this the comments are skipping around, so I'm having to... Uh, lack why question from Benjamin why the lack of lightning with this storm there actually isn't a lack of lightning there's been quite a bit it's just been scattered around so uh, I, there is quite a bit of lightning and there will probably be more um, report from Angwin uh, from rural Angwin in Napa County uh, got blasted uh, trees down everywhere uh, and the beetle killed forest is falling apart in the winds unfortunately that makes sense those trees are much weaker than than healthy trees, um, and we're seeing problems, plenty of problems with healthy trees, so that just makes it worse. Small landslides, road flooding, everything. Um, Alex Breitler comments, I can't recall a wind event that was this prolonged in the San Joaquin Valley. We've been going strong with 40 plus mile an hour gusts for seven hours. Yes, it's been, it's been a long storm already, and it ain't over, although the wind event is likely to end tonight. Um, the rain event is just getting started in Southern California, which is where I'm heading next with all of this. Um, yeah, wind and hail uh, earlier in Pacifica. Uh, that, that's uh, not surprising given the, the radar uh, signature uh, been seeing. Uh, Sacramento now gusting to 64 miles an hour, so this is definitely a damaging windstorm. Um, and just to reiterate, there were a bunch of PG&E weather stations that recorded winds over 90 miles an hour and some that recorded winds essentially of 100 miles an hour, 98, 99 miles an hour in the Bay Area. Granted, those are mounted on the top of power poles in very windy locations preferentially, but it is an indication that given the amount of damage and given the lower elevation sites like airports and downtown areas have been gusting 60 to 75 miles an hour, just an indication of, of a quite how... Uh, quite how uh, d substantial these winds have been across such a wide region. Uh, let's see here. Um, now it sounds like weather radio and, and uh, certain kinds of emergency alerts are down uh, from National Weather Service LA because of a power outage in Santa Barbara in the transverse ranges. That seems I mean, I guess you have other ways to get it, but it's, it would be nice if the uh, if the uh, emergency broadcast system didn't go down so easily. I thought we had figured that one out. Uh, let's see what else is popping up. Uh, Santa Barbara Airport is now flooded. All air traffic has been halted. Uh, ground stop at San Francisco for wind. Santa Barbara, there is actually water flooding flooding over the runway and into part of the terminal, supposedly. Uh, again, all everything I do on this on this channel is uh, largely unverified, but I will say that I won't repeat things unless I think they're highly plausible given the conditions. So everything I'm actually bothering to recirculate 
they may not be official. They may not. It may be rumors, but they are plausible rumors given what is uh, else is going on. Uh, so, uh, so uh, Santa Barbara Airport is currently shut down due to active water on the runways, and that is likely to be shut down for a while, probably at least for a day or so. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. All right, so. Looking at quickly at to see at the weather was common section, then I'm going to jump to Southern California because that really is where the big concern is going to be moving forward once the wind dies down. Um, yeah, Mather Field in Sacramento gusting to 68. So man, these these are these are some big ones. Um, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the radar. I'm gonna move it around. I'm gonna get rid of this velocity scale. We don't need it for Southern California. Just take a quick look again. Let me go up to Sacramento before I go south. Um, yeah, there is that narrow cut cold tunnel rain band. That, that is just a gnarly looking thing. Um, fortunately, it does have some horizontal progression, so it's not completely stalled over one area. But again, these are places that already got raked earlier today, so uh, it's just gonna cause more issues. Uh, all right, let me go. To, I'm going to do a radar tour of moving south. So Vandenberg is the next most south. Um, San Luis Obispo County itself getting a bit of a break. There's some training showers, but they don't look too bad right now. There is still a flash flood warning in effect that includes Santa Maria, some adjacent regions. But I think that uh, for now, at least, uh, this axis, uh, the flooding shouldn't be too bad, although additional flooding is possible. But the bigger concern then, I'm going to go to the next uh, most southerly radar again, uh, and this is now uh, looking at um, looking at the broader transverse ranges in Los Angeles area. I'm going to zoom in. Um, sorry, I, hopefully I don't have. Uh, nope, it's not frozen. It's just uh, huh. It's not wanting to zoom. Let me see if I just move it around. If I can. Um, all right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna quit the that app and come back into it. Um, all right, that fixed it uh, as it often does. I'm gonna go back to uh, make sure that you're still seeing what I'm seeing as this uh, as this came out. Uh, let's make sure that you're still seeing uh, the radar scope. There we go. Okay, okay, all good, all good. There we go. Um, all right, so animating this radar and zooming in. Just want to double check that you're seeing uh, what, I, what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, so the folks are confirming Santa Barbara Airport is closed until further notice. And that makes sense, but it is likely to be, it could be a lengthy closure. Uh, okay, we're looking now at the, this is the LA radar site, even though it's technically located right next to Ojai on a hill uh, right here, the blue circle. This radar site, the problem in Southern California is, as you can see, that there's a beam blockage by the mountains, so you can't, it doesn't mean there's a suddenly like a magic break in the rain here. In fact, the heaviest rain is probably still falling up in this region up there, but it's blocked by the beam. But we can get some indication of what's going on. There is, uh, as I mentioned, there's a there's a flash flood warning. This is an escalated flash flood warning. So this one in particular is considered a partic particularly dangerous situation, a PDS flash flood warning. So already we're seeing particularly dangerous situation warnings. Uh, I do think that the western half of Santa Barbara County is getting a break. So uh, west of the city of Santa Barbara and maybe even the city of Santa Barbara a little bit later, we'll get a little bit of a reprieve potentially. Well, actually, let me let me draw that line a little bit closer. I think, unfortunately, Santa Barbara is probably just inside this area that's going to continue to get this onslaught overnight. The precipitation is eventually going to actually retrograde and shift back westward before it then shifts back eastward. And this is the big problem, this windshield wiper effect, where it's first the band is now setting up uh, uh, this, this axis of uh, very heavy uh, precipitation is now setting up like this. Uh, you know, you have the, 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 it's, this is the orientation of the flow, um, but the axis, so, so if you think about sort of this, uh, 
this feature like this. This is sort of where the atmospheric river is. And it's all just, just coming on shore, uh, this warm, moist air in the subtropical atmospheric river plume, and it's just sitting there. And it's pretty much going to remain within these two dashed lines horizontally in this box uh, for the next 24 or 36 hours. Uh, that's a big problem because it's already causing significant problems and they're only going to get worse. So right now we can be a little bit more specific. Originally it wasn't totally clear the area that was going to see, be, be of, the, of the greatest concern over the next couple of days. But right now I think it's really going to be uh, just about from Santa Barbara uh, eastward to maybe uh, the or Orange County line or so. Um, I don't know why this is cutting out, but um, this is going to be the axis. And of course, uh, who lives here but, oh, I don't know, just uh, uh, the majority of California's population in the LA basin and adjacent areas. So LA County is right squarely in the crosshairs of this one. And this is pretty concerning. You can see that as this comes on, the, the rain is not all that impressive out over the open ocean. But as soon as you hit land and you start getting that, that rising and that ascent, I mean, this, this, this rain is pretty much developing just inland from the coastline as it starts to go upslope. So this is classic upslope, uh, uplift of, of, of a moist air mass with strong winds and a, a conditionally unstable atmosphere. It's just a recipe for big, big, big flood problems. Um, and this, this is, you know, this is creek and stream flooding, certainly, urban and street flooding, certainly, freeway flooding, certainly, but also potentially larger river flooding. Uh, there are a litany of flood warnings that have been issued, and frankly, I'm not sure the, mo the, the river forecast models have a great handle on the precipitation potential. So, uh, obviously, you know, follow the, the Weather Service warnings, but I think we're going to be kind of playing this by ear in terms of just how high the rivers get. But the main concern with this event is not so much river flooding, although they might well flood. It is flash flooding and debris flows. So, you know, we have the transverse ranges up in here, and we have any number of other smaller mountain ranges. So you, ha so you have the Santa Monica Mountains, you know, on, in, in West LA, and there's, there's, you know, all sorts of lovely topography crisscrossing back in here. Um, you know, you have, you have Wrightwood, you have Big Bear. Um, I guess that's, that's all somewhere up in this region. But the point is, there's a lot of big mountains in Southern California, and right now they're acting as a catcher's mitt for this really intense atmospheric river. The more, the bigger problem, though, than its instantaneous intensity, if this was twice as intense but was moving through four times faster, I don't think we'd be seeing big problems. But this is, this, this is the big concern. It is slow moving, it is stalling out, and it looks like it's really going to continue to remain stalled out over this region uh, for a while. In fact, it may even shift a little bit back this way uh, in the overnight hours before shifting back this way on Monday. This whole plume, this whole axis, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to go a little bit farther down to the Santa Ana Mountains radar site. Sometimes this gives a better view over LA. Again, there's beam blockage. You can see again that there's this is not an artificial 90 degree angle. It's just that there is literally a giant rock in the way. Uh, but other than that, you can see it's raining everywhere. It's, uh, it's raining everywhere, and the rain, again, the intensity is increasing almost the second you get inland from the coastline. I'm pretty much tracing the coastline. That pretty much is the axis of the heavy rainfall. Uh, so, and it's pretty equal opportunity. Obviously, it's heavy, heavier in the mountains, but here it's less spotty than Northern California. It's just everyone's getting soaked. All right, so I'm going to bring back up San Francisco because this is in some ways the more dynamic radar, or maybe Sacramento. I'll look, check in on that cold frontal, narrow cold frontal rain band that's still coming through. Um, yeah, yep, that's starting to lift north. Sac Sacramento is getting its own showers, and then the Bay Area. Uh, it's it's just kind of it's just kind of continuing to fill in. All right, I'm going to go back to the comments, uh, check out what's going on. A lot of you joining again tonight. I just want to remind folks that this is probably my last live stream uh, of the night, yeah, only the third one, uh, but I'll be back tomorrow early-ish, uh, 9 a.m. Pacific time is the scheduled one, and I will probably have another one I just haven't scheduled yet. In fact, I actually have to remember to put this on my calendar. Uh, I'm literally editing my calendar uh, right now so I don't forget because this has gotten kind of nuts. Um, there is the YouTube live stream at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Monday, February 5th. Uh, okay. 
And unfortunately, the flood situation in Southern California is likely to be a lot worse then when that happens. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, it sounds like the intel from, from re, by the way, regarding the Cal ISO transmission emergency is due to uh, the large number of individual outages. So uh, it does sound like we've reached the point where the integrity of the grid is not great simply because there are so many localized to regional scale outages. So it's unclear at this point whether those rumors of larger scale transmission problems from infrastructure damage are true or not, but it does seem like there's issues at a minimum just because there's so many distributed outages on the grid that it's causing problems. Um, folks reporting that it's still, the wind is still getting stronger in the suburbs of eastern Sacramento, 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts now. Um, Power outage is now extending up to Oroville. So now this extends from Butte County to Ventura County. This is a huge power outage region that, for some reason, a number of media outlets I'm just looking right now are still reporting like 100,000 outages. They're literally off by like 2.5 million. I don't quite understand that. Um, perhaps Kyle ISO is not doing a great job reporting. I don't know. Um, the other interesting thing is that the outages are now shifting northward. So uh, they have shifted away from being mainly Central Coast, and now they're mainly from the Central Bay Area and the uh, northward uh, in the uh, San Joaquin, Sacramento counties. Now Sutter County and Yuba County also have a large fraction of people off, and the outages went back up in Mendocino too. So I think it's kind of indicative of w really as the winds have progressed up the coast. Um, just taking a look again. All right, um, I want to take a look at the comments. I haven't looked at those. I have to sort of toggle back and forth. Well, at least the, my connection is pretty solid. It's amazingly, doing that jury rig tree trimming actually seemed to work. I'm a little bit astonished that it did. Um, yeah, by the way, folks saying that LA County is home to 10 million people, it was kind of a joke. Um, it's just a couple million. Uh, it, it is, it's about 10 million, which is about a quarter of the entire state's population uh, in one county. And it is the county that is going to be most severely affected by flooding dur during this event. So that is part of the problem. You know, it's sort of a, if a tree falls in a forest, does anyone hear it problem with disasters, right? Which is that, well, if there aren't a lot of people in the way or there's not very much vulnerability to that event, then that's great. And, you know, it really doesn't become a disaster. Uh, but if there are a lot of people in, in, in the way for a major event, as is going to be the case here, then that's actually makes it a much bigger problem uh, than it otherwise would be. Because there are just so many people potentially in harm's way. And there are localized mandatory evacuation orders and warnings in LA County, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, probably elsewhere that I haven't been able to keep track of, mainly downstream, downhill of recent burn areas, but also in some other highly debris flow susceptible areas. They've, they've done evacuations of the river channels themselves. I know there's a lot of folks experiencing homelessness who, who are who have re essentially reside in those channels. So I know that the, the they've gotten better about uh, doing helicopter runs where they use the, the loudspeaker and they go in on foot and let people know that a lot of that land is going to be underwater. So uh, I'm glad that happens. But, you know, at this point, some of these rivers are going to probably end up out of their banks uh, beyond those channels. So uh, some real issues here. Um, oh, uh, well, update that Highway 1 at least sounds like it's a big tree that's down rather than a landslide. So I suppose that's a slight improvement. Um, let's see here. All right, does this storm have a cold front and a warm front? Yes, unusually for California, this storm had a very distinct warm front and cold front along with an occluded front. So you got almost all the fronts all in one storm, um, which is not typical for California. Usually the warm frontal features are quite uh, indistinct in this part of the world, but this is one of the things that makes this storm remarkable. Folks commenting that we're already closing in at three to four inches in the lower elevations of western LA County. Yikes, that's a lot of water already. 
Um, yeah, unfortunately, some folks who are out of power now, this won't be true for everybody, but for some folks, uh, there will likely be extended power outages that could last, you know, a day plus. Um, your mileage may vary, as is usually the case, the more rural you are and the smaller the outage it is. So if it's just you on a remote mountaintop, it might take a while. If it's you on a grid that's got 50,000 other people out in a suburban area, there's a good chance that'll come back on sooner rather than later. But with these scale of outages, PG&E and all the other utilities out there in northern and central California are going to be really, really busy and they don't have enough crews internally to deal with everything all at once. Also. In places where the winds are still very strong, they have to wait to even start the work until the winds get below uh, whatever their internal threshold is. I think for a lot of utilities, it's once uh, gusts get back down below 40 miles an hour, they'll put people up. But at any point higher than that, then it's just too dangerous to put people up in the buckets up on ladders, which makes sense. I mean, it is a genuinely dangerous job. Um, so, and I think that those winds, by the way, at least they should die down by morning. So pg e is going to be probably start the work overnight and probably be really working everywhere by morning. That would be my guess. But it might take a while because they're just, the outages are just so extensive. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, All right, the, 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 the police scanner, or fire scanner in LA County is suggesting that uh, there's a lot of flood calls coming in from Brentwood and Hollywood Hills. So Brentwood, obviously, West LA, up at, parts of Brentwood are right up against the, 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 the base of the Santa Monica Mountains and the Hollywood Hills, which leads me to believe that there are there is some flooding probably in the creeks and streams coming out of the Santa Monica Mountains, maybe even some debris flows. That is concerning because if we're already seeing that, it's going to get a lot worse because we're going to get two to three times as much rain as we've seen so far in those areas. That's that's a concern. Uh, let's see here. Um... New flash flood warnings for LA County, extending farther south, San Pedro. Um, downtown LA, more warnings. All the way down to Redondo Beach, so it's uh, it's extending. Whittier, uh, man, so Long Beach. So really, it's. I would not be too surprised if essentially all of the, the coastal counties where almost everybody lives in Southern California are all under flash flood warnings by tomorrow morning or have been at some point tonight. And I also, unfortunately, wouldn't be too surprised if the Weather Service in LA ends up having to issue a flash flood emergency or two later, probably later tomorrow or tomorrow night. Those are only issued under fairly dire circumstances for localized, but very severe and immediately life-threatening or flooding. Uh, and there is the possibility that at least in some basins, some watersheds, we'll see that either as a result of flash flooding on uh, streams, creeks, and small rivers, or as a result of debris flows. They may also issue uh, those kinds of warning in those cases. So right now, these are the quote unquote lesser flash flood warnings. All flash flooding is of course dangerous. It does not take a lot of wa wa water to sweep you off your feet or even to sweep your car off the road. But there are different tiers of flash flood warnings. Right now we're seeing the a base level and the, the, the medium level, so the or, quote unquote ordinary flash flood warning plus the particularly dangerous situation flash flood warning, the tier above that would be uh, flash flood emergency, which we have not seen yet, but it is conceivably possible that depending on how things evolve, there could be a situation that warrants it at some point during this event, probably somewhere east of Santa Barbara and west of Orange County. All right, let's see here. Um, comment about debris flow catch basins and the San Gabriels are going to be overrun. Well, I mean, that is a possibility. Uh, I hope not to assert to a large degree, but this is the kind of event that might actually overrun uh, the flood control and the debris flow catchment systems in urban areas in Southern California. This is a 
this is a pretty extreme event and those systems are only designed you know to accommodate up to a certain volume and beyond that things get really messy really quickly um, the satellite image shows a continuous band of clouds extending from Point Conception to south of Hawaii. Uh, let me just bring up the satellite uh, and show that to everybody because, yes, that is exactly correct. That is exactly what you're seeing. Your eyes are not deceiving you. I have to switch apps here. You're going to see my face briefly. Maybe you won't see my face briefly. Still getting used to this whole uh, creating my own content thing. Um, let's see here. Is this the right window? Yes, that's the model. Gonna need to switch tabs. Uh, I'll do a quick check on the power outages. Uh, okay, it looks, it looks like they've stabilized around uh, two and a half million, so I'm not sure that's good or bad news. Uh, okay, so here's a one view, a closer view of, of satellite imagery. Um, this really underemphasizes what's going on in Southern California, but it really helps you see what's going on with the spin in Northern California. All these little crosses, these are recent lightning strikes, so there is lightning going on, on in the central and northern Sacramento Valley right now with some other random strikes offshore. But if I, if I look at the long wave imagery, this is maybe going to give a slightly better picture, and let me zoom out. I'm going to go to the continental scale. This is Goes West satellite from, from NASA NOAA. All right, so this is a huge view. Obviously, this is the North Pacific. This is all of Western North America, uh, Hawaii. This is Kauai down here in the lower left corner. So just so you can see, um, actually, this map is not large enough to capture the scale of the event that's unfolding. So I'm going to zoom out to uh, literally the global view. Uh, this is the Ghost West global view. Okay, here's what's going on. And boy, does that look a little ominous. Look at this. Look at this atmospheric river. This is like a beyond Pineapple Express atmospheric river. So again, this is Hawaii. Look how far south this is extending. There is a connection to the deep tropics. This is something that we've been concerned about earlier. So Pineapple Express might be down to about this latitude. This is about where Hawaii is. But look how far south, how much farther south it's going. Again, this is the deep tropics. We very rarely see mid-latitude systems that are able to, to connect themselves with such a deep subtropical and even deep tropical tap. But man, is this system one for the record books. Uh, let's look at the mid-level water vapor. You can kind of see this a little bit better. There is advection of air all the way from down here. So that is, you know, down here is well south of Hawaii, and it's just making a beeline for this section of Southern California. And look how much there is to go. As this low lifts northward, the challenge is this plume is going to remain directed at Southern California for a long time, 24 to 48 hours potentially. Uh, and we look at lower level water vapor, I'm just looking at some different products, it just makes this look a little more distinct. You can kind of see what's going on if we look at upper level water vapor. Uh, really, it's the same picture. So although this storm, this swirl is moving away, this secondary swirl, this low pressure system, is going to sort of attach itself. It's going to swing in underneath and continue to sling this moisture towards Southern California. So this low won't bring strong winds. It would not be a very remarkable storm in its own right, except about what it's doing to bend this flow a little bit, realign the axis and keep it aimed squarely at Southern California. And as you can see, there's been some enhancement of this atmospheric river the last few hours. It's actually become a lot more distinct. Uh, and that is not really what we want to see at present. So that's that's what we're seeing. I'll take a look at the outages again, again, relatively stable. I'll go look back at the comments, see what's coming in here. Um, a lot of viewers again, over a thousand people, which is impressive given that there's um, this was a short notice session. So uh, I I fear what the morning will, will hold <laughs> in terms of uh, the number of eyeballs. And also, frankly, in terms of what the, the, the reality on the ground might be in Southern California. I think uh, Northern California, once the winds die down, this event, everyone's going to be cleaning up and reconnecting the power lines and it will fade away uh, for the most part. But in Southern California, this, this really is pretty concerning and it's continuing to escalate. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, 
Pasadena Unified is considering canceling classes. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the LA USD or a bunch of other school districts end up canceling. I understand their reticence. I know that they, you know, there is some concern that some people are actually safer at school and have more access to food at school. But honestly, tomorrow really is going to be a very difficult day to get people safely to schools, uh, either, you know, on foot and public transit or school bus or by personal vehicle. All of those modes are going to be um, potentially severely disrupted or just un genuinely unsafe. So... Uh, as usual, by the way, there is almost no local news, uh, really, aside from a couple of the broadcast networks uh, locally in Southern California that really have up-to-date information right now. It is, I agree with folks, it is frustrating. It's a Sunday night, it's nighttime, and it seems like it's often difficult during natural disasters to get real-time information on weekends and at night, which you wouldn't think would be true so much in the information age, but... Um, don't want to editorialize too much. There is some good information on Twitter right now. For whatever reason, there's a little less misinformation with this event than with some recent extremes, um, if you know the right hashtags to use. But uh, it, it's difficult. So it, it, is, it is difficult still to find some of the, the information that I would want to be able to see right now in real time. Sounds like there are now uh, new evacuations for Orange County. Uh, or at least evacuation warnings, so not orders, so uh, voluntary warnings currently. Those may be upgraded, though. There's still some time in Orange County and San Diego counties, by the way. This will not be as big tomorrow, but it will be late Monday into Tuesday, so there is still daylight tomorrow down that far south to actually do some prep work and just, and just to see how things evolve. Um, so... Yeah, and this is, um, yeah, so really in Orange County, a lot of the evacuations that are going out, the the warnings are for the canyons. So, and this is where I would expect to see the biggest flooding and debris flows to occur uh, just about everywhere uh, in Southern California during this event. So I think the governor declared a state of emergency in Southern California. I wouldn't be too surprised if it got extended northward because, of course, there's a lot of wind damage up there. Although, fortunately, the flooding and the wind damage generally aren't overlapping that much during this event. So that is uh, one small consolation, anyway. Um, let's see here. Yeah, seeing some images of uh, major urban flooding in Santa Monica, west side of LA, uh, right now. Um, Just taking a look at, uh, yeah, four inches of rain already in L.A. County just from the, the last 12 hours by Westlake Village. Yikes, that's a big number already. Again, these are, these are not in the mountains. These are down in the flatlands, the coastal plain. So those kinds of numbers are considerably more alarming there than they would be, say, in the mountains. Um, let's see what else is going on. Um... I'm going to go back. I'm going to throw the, the, the radar back up while I'm umming um, just so folks can see things that are maybe a little more interesting than the static map. Sorry about that. Sometimes I, I get a little bit lost. All right. Um, looking back at the, the rate, it looks like the Weather Service in Sacramento issued a special weather statement for that um, for that narrow cold funnel rain band. It's losing a little bit of distinction in the north, but it's still going to bring torrential rain and probably 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. Um, so fortunately, it's not quite severe level, but it's close. Um, and these squally showers continue to move across the Bay Area. I do think this blob that's currently over the North Bay, Marin County, Sonoma, Napa counties up here is probably the last major blob of organized precipitation. But then for the rest of the storm, it's going to look more like this. And, you know, these are still some pretty intense showers, isolated thunderstorms with very squally winds and torrential downpours down over the Santa Cruz Mountains, but it is at least a little more localized. Um, let's see, so if I, if we, if we go, I'm going to leave this up for now, uh, see what folks are saying. Oh, 
All right. Um, well, uh, Melinda asks, uh, could you say something about Eureka? It sounds like the state ends at Santa Rosa. Um, well, in this case, this event really isn't, and you can see this based on just the the power outage map and the flood, uh, wa flood warning map. The, the northern third of the state, for the most part, is not getting a huge storm out of this, certainly compared to the area south. The north coast is more used to heavy rain and wind, and this is much less out of the ordinary for them because it's not as extreme that far north. So there, of course, is rain and wind up there, but there's no major flood risk and no major wind damage risk uh, up there from this. So in that sense, it's not quite a statewide storm. It's not affecting the southeastern deserts and the northwestern corner of the state as much. So that's why I'm not talking about it too much. Uh, let's see. Thanks for the thanks for the support, folks. A lot of folks have been doing that. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, a lot of folks reporting anecdotally that creeks and rivers in LA County are running high. I'm sure many of them are running high. I, I do hesitate when folks say that the LA River looks like it's very full. I, I would want to be very careful about making that kind of statement. So um, it can it can be moving a lot of water very quickly without being very full. The channel capacity is very high. Although I will, it is important to note, it is not infinite. So there is conceivably a level of flow where the concrete channels of the LA River could be overwhelmed. Uh, to be very clear, I'm not saying that that's what's happening currently, certainly. It is not happening currently, and I'm not saying that's something that's likely to happen during this event. Uh, so, I, But I think it is the smaller bodies of water that are more likely at risk of having things like that happen. But just in a general, you know, risk management flood perspective uh, in California, you know, we think about some of these river channels that we've that we've made really efficiently jet water out to the ocean in concrete boxes, and they do that job very well. Uh, it could be argued whether or not it's the best use of concrete, but, you know, it, it does move water quickly out to the ocean, and for lesser floods, it prevents areas around the river channel from flooding. Again, though, they are finite channels. There is a certain volume there is a certain cubic feet per second beyond which the channel can accommodate it. So, you know, someday we may find out what that number truly is. Uh, but I'm more concerned about bodies of water uh, other than the LA River with this event. Smaller ones that have less management. Uh, it's really, it's, it's, the, it's the fast responding watersheds in the canyons uh, that are of key concern right now, along with some of the other rivers that are not as heavily managed from a flood control perspective that could flood. Those, are, those would be the primary concerns right now. This is more of a flash flood concern than a big river flood concern, uh, but there will probably still be some rivers that flood anyway. So I'd rather not speculate too much on that specific point, but I will say that LA County is going to be the epicenter of this flood risk, and the flood risk is very high with this event, higher than we've seen in many years. Exactly how many years? Well, ask me again on Wednesday. But this is something that is not ordinary. We did not see this last year in Southern California. Uh, we did not see this in any recent years in Southern California. So some of the impacts may be similar to major flood events in 2005 or 2010 in Southern California. Um, in some cases, they locally could be worse than that. Some places it probably won't be as bad, but in other places it actually could be worse. But starting from there sort of as a benchmark for thinking about potential impacts and maybe scaling it up or down from there is probably a good way to think. Now, of course, the watersheds are different than they were back in uh, 2005 and 2010. There have been a lot of wildfires since then. There has been continued development along some of the floodplains there uh, since then. So uh, I don't think we can really let past experience be the judge uh, too much in that sense because no two storms are alike. And I, I honestly can say I don't think I've seen a storm quite like this one before. Uh, and uh, I don't think that we can say that the, even if we did have exactly the same storm sequence that we got in 2005, that the antecedent conditions are different. It's wetter outside now than it was. It's been really wet recently, so the soils are saturated, and we've gotten a lot of wildfire uh, activity in the last decade in this region. Some of the legacy of those, of those wildfire footprints Fortunately, you know, for most of the biggest fires, it's been at least a couple, two to three years, if not longer. 
But we know from research that the legacy of these major high intensity fire footprints sometimes can linger for five to 10 years. Now the, the watershed hydrologic responses are strongest in the first couple of years, but they often do still linger to a certain extent for five or 10 years, meaning that you know, any of the areas that have had large intense fires in the last decade are probably going to have at least a somewhat more rapid hydrologic response in those watersheds than they would have prior to those fires. So that also amplifies the risk, particularly in the canyons and downstream uh, of, those, of those fire zones. Let me take a sip of water quickly. You may see a very brief uh, ad, uh, but I'm not quite done yet. There's a few more things I wanna get to before we go. So just let me take a sip of water, watch the radar, and then you might see something briefly. All right, um, folks, thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can find any more information on that Cal ISO uh, transmission de emergency that was declared. Um, yep, still, still nothing. So again, it may just simply be due to the number of individual uh, outages in, in the local uh, components of the grid. Um, that I think that's gonna be my default assumption unless I hear otherwise. Um, not like that doesn't matter, that's still quite significant. Uh, let's see here. Um, yeah, a couple of programming updates. Again, I will be on live here again uh, on a different live stream tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I'll also be on the Weather Channel at about 10.40 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, assuming they don't try and get me on earlier or bump me. I know that they have some folks, I think they sent some of their crew to California, which is always a sign of something. Um, Folks now reporting torrential rain in Chico. I think that's the northern end of that NCFR that we were looking at earlier on radar. Maybe I can bring that up in a moment. Uh, but uh, do join me again tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, and again, uh, probably later in the day at some point, TVD. I know there's going to be a lot of news media requests tomorrow, so i got to divide my time between these sessions and those requests. But... Uh, I, I do think that these live streams are valuable, partly because I know members of the media can borrow directly from it if I show my face occasionally. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's any recent big updates. Not, not so much there. Um, All right, I'm gonna go do one more radar tour and then I think I may call it a night for now. Um, I know a lot of folks are gonna have a rough night either because they lost power, because it's windy, or because the flood threat is escalating. So um, I can't stay with you all night in this case, but I don't know, depending on how things go tomorrow, I may be up pretty late tomorrow night uh, with folks. Uh, but let me do one more radar tour uh, see what's going on, uh, and I'm going to share that with you as I do so. All right, so here's the Bay Area radar, still seeing that big blob of rain and wind over the North Bay, it's starting to taper off finally, so I think the back edge is now sort of right around uh, San Rafael Concord axis. Uh, we have uh, all of these intense, but at least localized uh, tr convective shower downpours sort of streaming in these lines uh, from really from Monterey County north up to the peninsula. That's going to continue all night in Northern California. Sacramento area, we got, oh man, now well, this is, that escalated quickly. Um, so we now have a, a double NCFR. I'm not even quite sure exactly what this structure would look like meteorologically, but anyway, there are two really intense lines of extremely, uh, let me zoom in. Uh, so this is, the southern extent of it is just north of Davis, so sort of in woodland, 
and it looks like it's going to extend into the maybe the northern suburbs of Sacramento as it moves east. But this is really hammering at Yuba City, Gridley, Biggs, and then this is indeed what you're seeing up in Chico. I'll go one one farther north. This would be uh, Beale Air Force Base radar. Yep, there it is. Uh, that is, yikes. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Probably getting nailed with torrential rain and wind. I mean, this is just a, quite an impressive NCFR type feature. I would expect there to be roadway flooding, urban flooding, anywhere where this is going through. Probably winds of 60 to 70 mile an hour gusts. Um, so, you know, I would not be too surprised to see a little bit, a little, slightly more widespread flooding in the Sacramento Valley. Uh, than expected, not from big river flooding, but from streams, uh, urban areas, and just flat spaces generally. Uh, that would be that would be what I would think. Um, yeah, that is that is one impressive radar picture, and so you can see this is, just extends all the way from. Well, let's actually, I think I can measure this. Uh, so this extends from Woodland to uh, at least let's call it Anderson. So it's not quite a straight line, so it's slightly longer. So that's at least 125 miles, probably more like a 150 mile long linear NCFR segment. So going all the way, and, and that might just be a factor of the radar that it might not be capturing the whole thing, but it's going all the way like that. So that's, that's quite the feature. Uh, okay, let's go back south again. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, Vandenberg, again, It's this is actually one of the calmer radar sites right now, so I'm going to skip it. Uh, Los Angeles would be the next one. It's still pouring rain pretty much everywhere in LA. It actually looks like it's intensifying. Uh, all those reports of urban and street flooding on the west side of LA, Santa Monica, Brentwood area, that's here. Uh, so that's the rain has been intensifying and again if you zoom in a little bit actually um, you know there's been report Hollywood Hills Beverly Hills again the this is essentially this is probably an orographically enhanced blob of rain over the Santa Monica Mountains and so all of this is going to drain or a lot of it is going to drain this way and then a limited amount is going to drain into the San Fernando Valley so there's going to be flooding you know there's a line of hills the axis is like this uh, so these are your nice little hills, and the water is just slewing off probably in both directions. So you're going to get, you know, significant more urban type flooding here, and then, uh, you know, the San Fernando Valley is a bit of a basin, uh, and the water is going to drain. I mean, everything that drains into the basin here is eventually going to drain down here, uh, LA River. So you know, this this is this is the challenge: is that the catchment for the LA River is vast and it is very steep. And it is very susceptible to acting as a catcher's mitt during events like this. So, I mean, when you see this back building, I mean, look, as we've been talking, look at what's sort of building just off of Santa Monica. Like this, this rain is just intensifying. So uh, it is, it is getting worse. Uh, let's look at the Santa Ana site. Sometimes it gives a better view of LA. It gives us essentially the same view of LA, but it tells us that you know, these heavy rains, again, I'll, I'm going to highlight which areas are beam blockages. It does not mean it's not raining in these areas. It just means that there are mountains blocking the beam. So pretty much uh, everywhere where you can see data, it's heavy rain. And everywhere you can't see data, it's probably still raining up here uh, and over here. It's just that the, the topography is blocking it. So again, as you can see, there's just, this is just continuous, if I zoom out, it's just continuously back building offshore with really no end in sight. It's just, it's just coming and coming and coming. And it's going to, it's going to maybe shift over here by tomorrow morning and then shift maybe back to here by late tomorrow night. But that is not a big shift. And this whole axis, all the transverse ranges, this is going to be a mess. All right, so let me go back. Uh, one last check of the, the power grid. It looks like it's stabilized around 900,000 customers, meaning it's 900,000 times about 2.5, so probably 2.3, 2.4 million people without power uh, still. Uh, and those outages continue to expand northward. There's actually a bunch in Butte County now too. So big deal power, power outages in the north and then big deal flood risk in the south is the one sentence summary there. All right. Um, 
I'm going to go through the remaining comments, and then I think I'm going to call it an evening, even though that does not mean that things are calming down. I just can only spend so much time on YouTube Live right now. Um, so I'm going to turn off the radar and bring my face back up, just for the, the personal touch at the end. Um, All right, so yes, yeah, so Sepulveda Basin, for example, uh, already at four inches, Sepulveda Canyon, four inches, Bel Air Hotel, didn't know they had a ring gauge, 3.89. So you see it's clustering right around four inches, a lot of places. And LA, Topeka Canyon, though, five and five and a third inch uh, inches already. Again, that's a lot. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, Ryan mentions minor flood stage on the Sacramento River at Tehama Bridge. Um, I'm not, yeah, that's that's not super concerning. I don't think we're going to see any is major issues. Sacramento River, all well within the Weir system. And uh, I don't even know if it's going to spill significantly into the Yellow Bypass with this cycle. So that is not the part of the state that I'm concerned about, nor really the San Joaquin system. This is not... Uh, this this really is going to be a uh, south and east of Santa Barbara big time flood problem where again the rivers are smaller but they are intense and they respond faster which is part of the problem. Uh, let's see. More and more reports of uh, flight cancellations, flooding. Uh, yeah, still expanding. There's flood emergencies. LA uh, Fire Department is responding to many flood calls. Uh, I, I, they're going to be doing. They're going to be pretty much full time flood duty. Something that they're not used to doing. I mean, the LA Fire Department is an urban fire department that actually has to deal with a whole lot of actual fires, which is not always the case. Uh, with all urban fire departments, but they sure do, both wildland and otherwise. Uh, so, but the flood response is, you know, that's that's a whole other challenge. And I know they're using some of the same equipment for it, but, uh, you know, the, the challenge here is that, you know, unlike a wildfire, for example, or, or an individual structure fire, so even a wildfire as big as they are, it is in a specific place. The problem with this event is there's just going to be flooding all over. It's going to be even more broadly distributed across the city and the county. So that's going to be one of the big logistical challenges is there's only so many personnel and so much equipment. So don't uh, don't force them to be uh, another uh, on another call when you drive your car into that freeway underpass that um, was clearly flooded from the get-go. Just don't do it. Um, not a good idea, and it's uh, potentially detracting from other uh, more urgent things. Um, there are going to be a lot of flooded underpasses, going to be a lot of flooded streets, and probably more significant flooding than that when you wake up in the morning. So stay safe out there. If you do get an evacuation order, uh, take it really seriously. This event is not speculative. It is here, and it is getting worse, and it's going to be with us for another 24-plus hours in Southern California. So it is not going to get better anytime soon. If you're concerned now and you're in Southern California, uh, then I would behave accordingly because it's likely going to get worse than it is now. Uh, so, and uh, there will be probably additional evacuation orders and warnings. Uh, one of the things I would really look out for is if there is something called a flash flood emergency issued. Obviously, flash flood warnings you take seriously as well. But if the Weather Service in LA or San Diego does end up issuing a flash flood emergency, that language is reserved only for very high tier flood emergencies, in which case uh, I would, you know, I would always take these seriously, but that 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 is one where I might take unusual actions to leave an area that was even possibly at risk, as opposed to just keeping an eye on things in other situations. Uh, that personally would be what I would do uh, in those different situations, because there is an escalated level of urgency. So to my knowledge, at this point, there are no such warnings in effect anywhere in California. But if they are issued later, then it is an indication that either something really serious has already started to happen, 
or that something really serious is imminently expected. And that is something that you'll get, you should receive as a wireless emergency alert on your cell phone, in addition to other channels. So that's something that should show up. People are getting those wireless emergency alerts for other kinds of flash flood warnings already. So just keep an eye on the specific language in them. Flash flood emergency would be a higher tier warning. But even short of that, the flooding is going to be widespread and serious, so take it seriously. Um, yeah, it sounds like the mayor of LA is telling people to stay home tomorrow. I think that is good advice, with the caveat that if your home is at risk, obviously you have to do something other than that. But for most folks, the safest thing probably is going to be to stay off the roads and stay at home in the LA basin and in surrounding areas tomorrow. That is probably... For the most part, good general advice. Uh, a few last minute reports. It sounds like the 33 is closed uh, outside of Ojai due to mud multiple mudslides. Uh, the Malibu Creek is already at 14,000 cubic feet per second. The LA River is at 34,000 cubic feet uh, per second. I don't immediately at the top of my head know exactly how significant those numbers are relative to historical flood flows. Uh, you know, but they're big numbers, but are they big numbers within the channel is a different story than if they're big numbers getting close to the top of the channel. Uh, but again, um, if for some reason something really crazy happens, it's possible, I guess, <laughs> that this won't be the last live stream of the night based on what I'm seeing. That's a little bit concerning, but, uh, there's a limited value to how much I can add beyond speculation in the middle of the night right now. So uh, I'm going to call it for now with the caveat that if, if there is some really breaking weather event beyond what we've already been seeing and the, and the expected escalation into the morning hours, maybe I'll pop back on on short notice. Otherwise, I'll be on at 9 a.m. Pacific tomorrow. I might be on a bit early, so but I will be on at 9. I might be on a little bit earlier than 9 also, depending. Um, and probably have another live session later tomorrow. So, yeah, folks saying that there's flooding and Sunset Boulevard. So again, it sounds like that the, that the water is just streaming off of the Santa Monica Mountains to the south, uh, the southern watersheds. All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it for now, uh, and I'll see a lot of you tomorrow. Hopefully, there's no occasion for me to pop back in in the middle of the night tonight. But if someone sends me some urgent phone call or text, I guess it's not completely inconceivable. So, this is one of those events. Uh, stay safe out there, and I, tomorrow uh, I know there may be more folks on. Hopefully, some of the people's power has come back. Uh, so uh, by then, hopefully other folks will be able to join up north who have currently lost power. All right. Thank you and talk to you all soon.